ready and getting all the presents and doing all the things and all the activities that part of us is ready for Christmas to be over and to take that deep breath and say, oh, back to normal. The part of us should be wishing that we could continue this on throughout the year, that we should desire to have that spirit of Christmas throughout the entire year. And my sermon today is, as you might expect from me, a little unusual. The title of the message is 2022, A Time to Lock and Load. Now, if you've got any military background, that terminology, lock and load, is not unfamiliar to you. It's a terminology that the military uses when they get ready to go into battle. And it talks about getting your weapon ready. You lock it and you load it. And it was made famous probably by John Wayne in the sands of Iwo Jima. It was used commonly throughout the Vietnam and Korean War. And I assume it's probably still very common in the Middle East right now. Make very clear what I'm telling Christians to do to prepare for 2022 is to lock and load is not that you get your guns out. But the attitude of locking and loading for a military person, I think, is adequate to consider us as Christians as we go into the next year. It sort of reminds me of two little cousins that went to visit their newborn cousin. And as the adults were taking care of the baby, the kids were very much anxious and watching everything. And they were kind of enthralled with this little girl. And as the parents were taking care of it, it came time to uh, change the diaper. And so the dad was changing the diaper. And as he opened the diaper, he put, ooh, she did a number two. And it smelled, and the little cousin turned and says, didn't they tell you she would do that? <laughs> and I think, you know, sometimes life is like that. We know things are coming. We know dirty diapers are going to be part of it. But it doesn't make it any more pleasant. It doesn't make it any more easy. And I tell you, as I was reflecting on this time of year, and I looked back at last year, we were so ready to be gone with 2020. 2020 was a tough year. And we were anxious that 2021 would be so much better. It had to be because 2020 was just a complete disaster. We are now at the end of 2021. And I would suggest that majority of you, while some things have improved, would say 2021 was not all that much fun either. In fact, it was kind of tough. And as I look forward to 2022, I would love to give you false optimism and say, hey, this is the year everything turns around and looks nice. This is the year where things straighten out. This is the year where love wins. But I'm here to tell you, I, watch, I don't watch the media news, and I would ration you to that yourselves because so much of that is false and bad news. But even the people that I do trust tell me scary things. There are analysts that look forward to 2022 and say, China will most certainly, after the Olympics, do something to Taiwan, either invade or do military actions. Russia is most certainly going to do something in Ukraine. Most likely, they're going to invade, which is going to lead us into world conflict. Here in the United States, we face racism in a level I have never seen in my life. And I grew up in Jim Crow. I remember the Civil Rights Movement. I didn't think we could get more crazy than that. And yet, here we are. And laughably, there are people now arguing for segregation again. And I find that crazy. Our economics are in bad shape. Anyone who does not fear the economic correction, if you want to call it that, that must come, is not looking very wisely towards the future. So 2022 is shaping up to be a really bad year. So if I pause right now and say, Happy New Year, you're all looking at me going, Yeah, right, Rick. This is not meant to be a depressing message. But it is meant to tell you what is going to happen, 
what I see on the horizon and how you and I as Christians should respond to it. And of course, if I want to know how I should live, my best and truest form of knowing how I should live comes from my Bible. So our first scripture today is Matthew 6, 25 through 34. And you've all heard these verses, but I think it behooves us to read them again, looking at them with different light. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his lifespan? And I want to pause right there because, my friends, you cannot add a single moment to your life by being anxious. But the doctors can tell you, you can certainly shorten it by doing that. So scripture is way ahead of psychologists when it says you will not actually lengthen your life by worrying, but you very well could shorten it. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of those. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them all. But seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And I want to reread that because that's a scripture that I literally believe wipes away those uh, prosperity gospel people. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. And sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Most of you who've gone through hard days know the truth of that actual last statement. Every day has enough trouble of its own. Don't borrow tomorrow's trouble into today because you're going to have enough trouble just dealing with today's. And anybody that's struggled knows exactly what I'm saying and knows exactly that that is so unhuman, so unlike us, that we just fight that urge. It is... In fact, easier said than done. When God compares us to the flowers and to the grass, He wants us to be very much aware that He is a God that is in control. Even when it seems like He has lost control. And there are times in your life where you will question and say, God, uh, you must surely have forgotten me or you must surely not be watching this situation because it's gone totally out of control. Something needs to change, and I have some ideas what it should be. My friends, that is your human nature speaking to question God. It's nothing new. I will tell you it comes straight from Satan. Satan used that same attitude and reasoning with Adam and Eve in the garden. And frankly, he uses it today very effectively. We can be distracted from God's love. We can be distracted from God's grace by letting the worries and the concerns of the world around us and our family and friends overwhelm us. It's hard to face hard times. And I'm here to tell you, it's not easy doing life. Anyone that will tell you that life is easy is either delusional or they're not old enough to have dealt with any of the problems that most of you know very well. We are to be, as the Bible tells me, worried about nothing but focusing on the kingdom of God. And that does change things. 
A few years back, I think it was a counselor that asked me the question, and it's a question I've learned to ask myself frequently. If what, what is it that I'm worrying about today? Will that be important in a thousand years? And the truth of it is, very few things that you worry about today will in fact matter in a thousand years. We all know that none of us will be here in a thousand years. So everything that I'm worried about, my bank account, my house, my car, my church, all these things in a thousand years won't be a problem. What I should be worried about are the things that in a thousand years will be a problem. Things like my salvation, the salvation of those around me, and my ability to learn and grow from Christ so that I can prepare to be in eternity with Him. Those are kingdom concerns that God tells us, stay focused on these, and the rest of it will be taken care of. Now that's easily said and harder done. And Luke 21, 34 through 36 says it even clearer. But watch yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the cares of this world. That the day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. My Bible knows me better than I know myself. It knows that I will fret and worry over many things. And those frets and worries will very often distract me from getting closer to God. It will keep me from getting into a deeper relationship. And if I'm not careful, as Luke says, I can be distracted totally away from God. It is not impossible to lose your way. God desires us to follow Him, to seek Him first. But all things come in retrospect to Jesus Christ. If I adopt that attitude... It's amazing how many major problems in my life disappear. Because when I put them on that scale, will this make a difference in a thousand years? The majority of the things I worry about will not make a bit of difference in a thousand years. No one will care what my bank account and my 401k said when I die. No one will care in a thousand years. It will be ancient history. What will matter is what was my relationship with Jesus Christ like? What was my relationship to the people around me like? Was I sharing Jesus with them? Was I telling them the good news? Those are the things that in a thousand years will be important. Now as we look to 2022, I have very little doubt it's going to get challenging. And I think the truth of it is, that's not something you want to hear just prior to a new year. You would like to say, well, hopefully next year will be better than last. And yet, as we all get a little older, we all know the challenges are going to get bigger. The sad tr truth of I, we have, and we hold a memorial service every November, is we often don't realize who we're going to lose this next year. Who is going to pass? And the grief that those passings will bring to us. That is part of the struggles and the challenge of this year going in. But, as Matthew says, don't worry about tomorrow. Because today has enough trouble for you to get through today. So focus on God Focus on the fact that He is able, that He is capable. John 16, 33, Jesus is telling His disciples, I have said these things to you, that you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. 
You will have tribulation. There will be pain. There will be sorrow. There will be troubles. But my friends, Jesus Christ said, I have overcome. I know what is going to happen in 2022. That's God speaking, not me. I know what you're going to face, and I have prepared you for that. Will you trust me? Or will you sit in fear over the one things that you can't control? When I listen to Jesus say, I have overcome the world, that gives me a sense that no matter what happens to me in 2022, God has it. He's in control. He has a plan for everything that is going to happen this coming year. That's what's called being locked. In the weapons, you lock your magazine into your rifle and you're ready. But the other term locked and loaded means I got a chamber of shell. For the soldier, it's not enough just to put a magazine with bullets in it and say I'm, there, I'm ready. That's being locked in, but it's certainly not loaded. To prepare for battle, the soldier must lock and load. He must chamber that round. He must be prepared for the troubles that are coming. And I will tell you, for the Christian, it is even more critical. Knowing that God has this under control is knowing and seating the magazine in the rifle. It's essential. If you don't know that, if you're not assured of the fact that God has this, get into your Bible and find out what he says. Because it's not going to do you any good to put an empty magazine into a rifle. In the same way, as a Christian, if I don't have the faith, if I don't have the trust in the Bible, and God says, I've got this, I am in control, I will take you through this coming year, without that, there's no sense of trying to move forward to the other part. But for the fact the matter is, we are called to be locked and loaded. We put a magazine into the rifle and we chamber the round. We are ready. For us as Christians, it's about living our lives with Christ. It's about living without fear. Hard to do in times of scary things. Times are hard. I'll be honest with you. I may be thankful that I don't know what 2022 is going to bring. And I'll be honest, I may not be prepared yet for all the things I'm going to face. Unless I'm with God. Unless I trust Him and know that He's got this. 2022 is going to get tough. And for the Christian, that means getting out your Bible. Getting into your Bible. Studying the Word of God. Studying scriptures like Matthew and Luke and John. That give us promises that God says, I've got this. Yes, you will face tribulation. But I'm bigger than that. I can conquer the world. That is what God is telling me. And if I know that, and I believe that, that I'm better prepared to face that world when troubles come. But another important aspect of a soldier, imagine a soldier in battle, taking his rifle, putting it on the ground and laying on top of it and saying, no, I don't think I want to participate today. While his friends are all slaughtered around him. We wouldn't consider that much of a soldier. In fact, in military terms, he would probably be tried and convicted. For a Christian, it's equally reprehensible. My friends, we, we celebrate the beautiful news on Christmas of a baby born to us to give us salvation. We acknowledge, we've accepted that gift. If I have accepted a wonderful gift, why would I not tell the world about that gift? Why would I not give the hope that I have to others who desperately need that help? You cannot be saved 
and be complacent about the world around you going to hell. It is not possible. Part of your heart will say, man, they need Jesus. I need him, but they need him too. And I'm going to share Jesus with them. Doesn't mean they're not going to like you. Doesn't mean they're not going to ridicule you. But it does mean you have good news. And as a Christian facing hard times, it is essential that you lock and load with the good news of Jesus Christ. That you tell the world there is a hope in a hopeless situation. And there are going to be times in the coming year, my friends, where you're going to talk to people and they will use this same term. It's hopeless. There's no way to fix this. It's broken too much. Nothing can fix this. And when you hear words like that as a Christian, it should take you to your scripture and say, no, it is not broken too much. Because I serve a God who tells me, I have overcome the world. I am more powerful than all the problems and troubles you're going to face. I have a solution if you but receive me, if you but accept me. My friends, to be a Christian in a world like this requires us to step forward and tell folks without hope that there is, in fact, hope. There was a story about a captain on the ocean, and they were in a storm, and the storm is getting worse all the moment. And the captain, realizing that it's probably too late, that they're going to have to abandon ship, asked and said, is there anyone here that knows how to pray? And one man says, yes, sir, I do. I know how to pray. He says, good. You pray. The rest of us are going to put life vests on because we're one short. In a situation like that, you say, wait a minute. Didn't pay to be a Christian that day. But that story does have a twist to it that I want to elaborate on a little bit. What the captain was saying is, because you know how to pray, because you are familiar with the God of the universe, and we are hopeless individuals who do not, we need rescued. You do not. My friends, you and I are that sailor that knows how to pray. You and I are the individuals who can tell the world that are putting on life vests and struggling with the world's problems that there is hope. Now the sad news is fear and doubt have crept into the church and I would suggest that it's as prevalent in the church as it is anywhere else in the world. Satan's greatest strength is that he can cause doubt. When Adam and Eve were asked the question, is it true you can't eat anything in the garden? He knew that was a false point. They could eat everything in the garden except one fruit. And that one fruit, God forbid them. So what does Satan do? By trickery, deception, by lying, he talks them into eating that one fruit. Just like Adam and Eve, you and I would be much better served by listening to what the Bible tells us that God said than what the world will tell you. 2022 is coming. It's a week away. We will be facing it. And I cannot tell you all the things that may or may not happen. But I can tell you that my God has control. He sits on his throne and he is willing and able to help us through this year if we but allow him. There's a couple of people that wrote things about hardships that I think behoove us. And most of you have probably heard of a guy named C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis was a famous atheist who rejected God and then because God was so overwhelming not only became a Christian but he became what was called an apologist and he's written many 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 great books and I highly recommend any of them to you but C.S. Lewis said this hardships often prepare ordinary people 
for an extraordinary destiny. If 2022 is going to be hard this year, it's not because God doesn't love you enough to protect you from hard times. It's because he's preparing you to be a people of extraordinary circumstances. He is a giving you the opportunity to shine a light into a world that is so darkened that they see no hope. You and I can be that light and that hope to that world. And another gal who you've probably heard if you're into any Christian music is a gal named Patsy Claremont. And she says, we are repeatedly told in scriptures to prepare for hardships. So why do we believe our lives should characterize by ease? I think she hit it on the head. I want to have an easy life. But the Bible tells me that's not to be the case. The wisdom you need to prepare for 2022 is that God has got strength enough to handle this. And that you are here for the purpose of letting the world know that there is hope in a hopeless world. If you are ready, God will prepare a destiny for you. I love the way C.S. Lewis puts it. Hardships often prepare ordinary people for extraordinary destiny. Do you look at yourself and say, I am prepared for an extraordinary destiny? I am prepared to be a beacon to a lost world? That's what C.S. Lewis says you can be. And I see scriptural evidence that where people did that, where they showed God's love and mercy to others, they reached out and they saved people. They were people who had extraordinary destinies. You and I are preparing to go into 2022. And this year will bring its hardships. It will bring difficulties. It will bring struggles. It will bring doubt. But my friends, if I'm confident in my God, if I am strengthened by the Bible and what he tells me, then I am prepared for an extraordinary destiny. God will use me beyond my capabilities, above my abilities. God will take words that I think are confusing and put them clearly into someone else's heart. And that's not just for pastors. That's for anyone who knows Jesus Christ as their Savior. We live in a world that is more hopeless this year coming than it ever has been. Those folks need to hear that we have a God who loves us enough to die for us and who has overcome this world. And I can trust Him And I can rely on him for whatever comes my way. The destiny God has prepared for you in 2022 is up to you to seize and take. Will you accept the challenge that God has prepared for you in this year? Or will you, like many have, sit quietly in your pew, letting Satan dig into you with fear and doubt and concern Will we let Satan take away the joy and the strength that God has given us and live in fear like the rest of the world? Or will we live bravely, facing whatever the world brings us in 2022, and go, my God has this. My God has already overcome whatever I am facing today. And therefore, I am at peace. I know my God is in control. That's the message we need for 2022. It's the message the world needs desperately also. Thank you.